when I was 25 at Grow Marijuana when one day this voice right beside me said, you can't play it here. Well, over the next three weeks the voices got more incessant. I was physically, mentally and emotionally exhausted and they just kept talking to me 24-7 man. I decided to pull the pin on my growing operation and that night the voices came to my bedroom window and said, okay, we're going to leave you now, but we'll be back. And they left. Two years later, I had an intravenous methamphetamine habit and uh, <laughs> everything was falling apart. I was falling behind and my mortgage and my debts were building up. And the voices returned me. Mm. I was growing pot indoors and the whole cycle started again. Yeah. The voices were commenting on everything I was thinking and doing. I was hearing them from the radio and from the TV as well. Sometimes I think they're being supportive, but then just the idea of hearing voices will get on top of me. I was certain I was a victim of some big conspiracy. Yep. I insisted on getting a chest x-ray to see what the robotic devices I thought were in me looked like. <laughs> It was obviously a normal exit, so I was certain they had showed me someone else's. It wouldn't have mattered what you'd done. I would have found some way to explain stuff to make it suit what I thought was happening here. Mum caught the crisis team, which led to my first inpatient experience. There was a raft of different labels the doctors gave my psychosis, it just depended on how I was presenting at that day, man. I was in and out of psych ward and on regimens of different psychotic medications. I remember a whole lot of just sitting around waiting for the world to change. I even remember being in seclusion. That wasn't necessary, man. <sighs> so what I really needed was someone to talk to. It was like being punished when I didn't need to be punished. Man, I finally thought, I want more out of life than this. So I did a diploma in visual arts and graduated. And the moment they gave me my certificate and shook my hand, the voices stopped me for six months. That's when I realized I needed to start taking some responsibility. That there was some mechanism in my mind that had flicked the switch. The more I ignored them, the more they started leaving me alone me. My psychiatrist told me I would need to take meds for the rest of my life, but I thought, yeah, I'm going to prove you wrong. So I started taking Tai Chi groups, and I was cycling, and I was swimming, and walking, because I noticed more regular exercise I did, the better I coped me. Once I started making positive choices, I had a lot of support from my mum. Yeah, she is such a strong person. She's magic. I know I wouldn't still be here if it wasn't for the support of my mum's provided. Yeah. I was still doing pee. So I started contracting myself around having a maximum limit I'd stick to. I thought, if I'm really going to talk to talk, I need to walk to walk me. I met an ex-P addict who had straightened his life out. And I thought, well, if he could do it, then so can I. After three weeks using no pee, I was like a rat man climbing up the drain pipe. I ended up completely psychotic again. I thought there were big robotic mosquitoes and flying around the room man. <laughs> I asked to see a psychologist and revisited some of the traumas of my early life. Man, it even turned out the death of my sister had been largely driving my whole substance abuse issues for the last 20 years. At first, it was really painful. I'm actually quite a sensitive guy. 
But where I grew up, sensitive guys, you get assholes. So I learnt not to be my real self. I was running from myself. Oh man, it was exciting for me to, you know, learn that it's okay for me to be who I am here. I felt a mixture of excitement and fear. What is life going to be like without the drugs? Is it going to be boring? Can I do it? It took two years to come off P. For the first year I was living on a roller coaster blindfolded. Yeah. When you're using substances, you know exactly how you're going to feel. But when you're not using, you don't know how you're going to feel. I also started coming off my meds. Yeah, man. I noticed the more I came off the medication, the more my emotions and my life got real for me. I am now medication free. And I haven't heard voices for about two years. Yeah. Each part of my recovery has been participating in the martial arts and drawing, playing my get, taking up pottery, and wood carving, and even having a dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a Taoist and a Buddhist. So I have faith and a following and a community I'm involved with. This happened after I came off the drugs and the antipsychotics. It seemed like a national progression as I've always been quite a spiritual person, just not in a formal way before. My advice to others is to believe in recovery. Life is now exciting and it gets better. I'm exploring the concept of making an income selling my wood carvings. Here yeah, I make tayaha, kowaiwai, traditional weapons, flutes, toko toko, and talking sticks, me. It always seemed an unreachable goal before, but now I have the self-belief and the faith to do it.